Serbia is planning to construct a 17 billion dollar, 650 kilometer long waterway connecting the Danube River to the Mediterranean Sea. Currently, any ships traveling between East Asia and Central Europe have to travel through the highly congested Dardanelles and Bosphorus Straits in Turkey, up the Black Sea, and through the Danube River. Meanwhile, in southern Serbia, the sources of the Morava and Vardar rivers lie only 30 kilometers away from each other. The Morava flows north into the Danube, and the Vardar flows south into the Mediterranean. For this reason, the idea of a waterway connecting the Danube, Morava, and Vardar rivers with the Aegean Sea is being seriously explored. The concept was first proposed in the 1840s and was discussed for many decades. Then, in 1900, the first official concept was released to the public by Serbian professor Nikola Stamenkovic. However, with the onset of World War I, the Great Depression, and World War II, the idea was set aside for several decades. Then, in 1961, it was reintroduced by the city of Belgrade, and in 1973, a preliminary design was presented to UN experts. However, nothing came of it, and soon, the Yugoslav Wars were wrecking havoc on the region. The idea was once again dismissed. Then, in 2012, Tomislav Nikolic of the Serbian Progressive Party won the presidency of Serbia. His party immediately promoted the idea, and in January 2013, Serbian minister Milan Bacevic signed a deal with the Chinese company Gazuba Group to conduct a feasibility study for the project. In late 2013, they released their concept. The waterway would have a total length of 650 kilometers, connecting the Danube just outside of Belgrade to the Mediterranean Sea at Thessaloniki. It would traverse three countries, Serbia, North Macedonia, and Greece. The first section of the waterway would follow the Morava River, spanning 346 kilometers. Along this section, there would be significant excavation to widen and deepen the riverbed. In addition, there would be cleaning and improvements to the river's flow. The second section of the waterway would follow the Vardar River, spanning 274 kilometers. Along this section, like up north, there would be excavation to widen and deepen the riverbed, cleaning, and improvements to the river's flow. Lastly, the third section would be a brand new, 30 kilometer long canal connecting the two rivers through the Presheva Valley. This canal would have a depth of only 4 meters and would be 43 meters wide. These three sections would contribute a total height difference of 492 meters between the Danube and Mediterranean. To overcome this elevation change, the waterway will have a total of 63 elevation steps, 58 of which will be ship locks, and 5 of which will be ship lifts. In comparison, the Panama Canal has only 12 locks. Lastly, 165 kilometers of lateral canals would branch off the main waterway, connecting even more inland regions to the sea. Along the waterway would be 5 to 7 hydroelectric power plants, with a total capacity between 300 and 400 megawatts. Lastly, there would be 9 ports along the route. In 2013, it was estimated that a Danube-Mediterranean waterway would cost approximately 17 billion US dollars, and would take at least 13 years to construct, maybe up to 30. Such a connection would have major advantages. First of all, it would give sea access to Serbia and North Macedonia, along with many other landlocked countries, including Austria, Slovakia, and Hungary promoting economic growth and increasing their international trade by a projected 52%. It would also put them on a major shipping route, boosting their inland ports and local economies. The waterway would decrease the travel distance between Belgrade and Thessaloniki by 1,260 kilometers or three and a half days of sailing time. This would improve trade between all of Europe and Asia providing major benefits to Germany, China, Japan, and many other countries. For Greece, the canal would boost the port and region surrounding Thessaloniki. The project would also redirect control away from Turkey, 
its major rival. On top of all this, the project's construction would create at least 20,000 new jobs, the canals would protect the region against flooding, and the hydropower plants would provide abundant green energy. By saving fuel, the connection would also decrease the environmental impacts of the shipping industry. Lastly, whoever builds it, Serbia or China, would demonstrate their construction capabilities to the world. Unfortunately though, a Danube Mediterranean waterway would have serious issues. Currently, the Morava and Vardar rivers are way too narrow and shallow. To allow for the passage of larger ships, there would have to be massive, costly excavations. And even with excavations, the passage would still be thin and shallow, making it an unviable option for many ships. The waterways filling would flood large quantities of farmland, displacing hundreds of people. Its construction would also harm local environments. Not to mention, Turkey strongly opposes the project. If it were to begin construction, conflict could erupt. Furthermore, China's involvement in the project has struck fears of debt trap diplomacy. On top of all this, the region is still very unstable from decades of conflict. In addition, the countries involved in the project are relatively poor. Finally, the concept is incredibly ambitious. It is almost eight times as long as the Panama Canal and has over five times as many locks. Even though it is feasible, $17 billion is no small fee. Many people think that the waterway's benefits would come nowhere near worth its cost. Since the feasibility study was released in 2013, the project has advanced. In March 2017, Tomislav Nikolic and Chinese President Xi Jinping met in Beijing, where they discussed the project proposal. However, since then, no major updates have been released to the public. It is uncertain whether Serbia is still pursuing the project. Regardless of this, with the region suffering due to the coronavirus and economic difficulties, it's hard to imagine the project starting soon. However, maybe one day, once the Balkans have stabilized both politically and economically, and the waterway has enough demand to justify it, the Danube Mediterranean Canal will finally be constructed. If you enjoyed this video, it would be amazing if you like and subscribe for more videos very similar to this one. Also, remember to check out the comments and join the conversation. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.